What's up, you guys, and welcome to another episode of The Girl Who Talks Sports with me, Sam Cardona, and thank you guys all for listening. Today, we have a lot of things to discuss today. However, we have some things that we have to discuss first. So first of all, we um, we have to discuss what's going on behind me. So if you're listening on a podcast, you obviously don't know what I'm talking about, but if you're watching on YouTube and happen to miss the video that I put out yesterday, um, I set up myself a new studio. So basically I have all of this stuff going on be- behind me and um, some memorabilia and some books and things like that. Um, I did a whole video yesterday explaining ev- everything that's behind me and like my new s- setup and everything like that. So this is going to be where I'm going to be doing my podcast and I'm going to be doing some YouTube videos if we end up doing that. So yeah, so that's what's going on behind me. If you haven't checked that out, um, the video from yesterday, you can totally do that to get an explanation for these fun memorabilia things that are behind me. So that's what's going on with that. Again, if you don't know that I have a YouTube channel. I do. It is The Girl Who Talks Sports. All of my podcast episodes that I record, I'm actually recording myself doing them. So you can watch instead of just listen. So if you'd like to do that, you can subscribe and click those little bells for the notifications, like videos, comment on videos, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'd really appreciate that. To continue with my weekly daily plug, my weekly daily plug oh my god my weekly shameless plug um you can also subscribe and follow on all platforms where you get your podcasts from apple Podcasts, spotify google podcasts everywhere basically that you can get a podcast we are recently on amazon music so if you have been getting your podcast through amazon you're like oh my god girl who talks sports is not on here now we are very recently we got the email last week um anything else that in terms of podcast stuff i don't think so i think that's really it so again if you didn't see the explanation video on my new backdrop you can go to my youtube channel and watch that otherwise we have things to discuss today all right so basically before we get into our nfl week two which we have a lot of things to go over for NFL Week 2. I have some personal news. So, (laughs) basically last week, if you didn't see, I went over the whole thing on my Twitter, on my personal Twitter, and I even retweeted it onto the podcast Twitter without using my name, my Twitter name or anything like that. I got shouted out on a Barstool Sports podcast, and it was kind of a surreal experience for me because I basically tweeted out, all right, let's just start from the beginning. I've been listening to Barstool podcasts for years now. Like I always have. And, um, I started listening to a new podcast that they put out called the Dime Podcast with Fran and Casey. Um, if you don't know who they are, um, well, you should, but (laughs) Fran, uh, is one half of chicks in the office and Casey does a whole bunch of things with um with Dave and Big Cat and everybody like that so they do a lot of things so they started this podcast which is basically very similar to mine where they talk about more of the stories of football instead of the stats and the analytics and things like that so I tweeted at them they retweeted some of my stuff they you know, we went back and forth with likes and favoriting and retweeting and all that stuff. And then basically I tweeted a picture of them to them of my Apple watch on my Apple watch. My Apple watch face is a picture of Joe Burrow that they happened to discuss the week before on their podcast. So I decided, okay, um, I should let them know that the picture that they were talking about is my, uh, my Apple watch face. Cause I think it's a really good picture of Joe Burrow and it's his ex- aesthetically pleasing to see 
quite honestly, every time I look at the time on my phone, on my watch. So, um, Fran saw it, Fran liked it, and then as I'm casually listening last week to the new episode that they put out on Thursday, I happened to listen to it on Friday, they started talking about it. So, what I want to do is just kind of go back and play you what they were talking about in their podcast. Plays into account here. Yeah, but it's Cleveland. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah, we had a girl tweeted us that Joe Burrow is the background on her, that picture of Joe Burrow. You know the one we're talking about. Oh, is I the know. background on her Apple Watch? Phenomenal. On her Apple That's Watch. That's just amazing. Honestly, on her Apple Watch. that is true dedication because it's not even just the background of her phone. I mean, you just look down at your wrist. Like, I'm wearing a whoop, and I wish that on my whoop right now I could just have no free app. So basically, they go on and talk about that. And I was listening to that, and I was slowly freaking out. I ended up posting a video of me freaking out to it as I listened to it for the first time. And, um, then they retweeted it. I got a reply from Casey. The whole thing has been very, very fun. And I just want to thank the girls for noticing me and even like shouting me out. I gained followers on my podcast because of it. And, um, so thank you. And if you ever want to collab let me know. I am open. I am totally open. So I appreciate you guys a lot. (laughs) All right. Let's get into NFL week two. Okay. So as per usual, you guys know that we always start with our NFL scores. We always start with our NFL scores. So let's go over all of the scores that happened this past week two. And all teams played again. uh, Same as week one. I actually don't know when the bye week start, but as of right now, every single team played this past week. So Thursday night football, we had Browns 35, Bengals 30. That was interesting. Um, Now we're on to Sunday, 49ers 31, Jets 13, Tennessee 33, Jacksonville 30, Tampa Bay 31, Carolina 17, Pittsburgh 26, Denver 21. The Rams, 37. The Eagles, 19. Um, Buffalo, 31. Miami, 28. Indianapolis, 28. uh, Minnesota, 11. Um, Green Bay, 42. Detroit, 21. Dallas, 40. Atlanta, 39. Arizona, 30. Washington, 15. Kansas City, 23. Chargers, 20. Uh, Baltimore, 33. Houston, 16. New England was... Oh, sorry. New England, 30. Seattle, 35. New York Giants, 17. Oh, sorry. Chicago, 17. (laughs) New York Giants, 13. I wish the score was the other way around, but what are you going to do? And finally, last night, or Monday night's football was Raiders, 34. Saints, 24. So, obviously, we had a lot of interesting games this past week. Um, Some very interesting storylines going on with all of these different teams. But before we get into more of the specifics from every week, we do have to separate some time for some injuries. So, there was an inexcusable amount of injuries this week. We are... I think everyone is pretty perplexed on how many injuries there were, and not even just to anybody, a lot of names that we know. So on my sheet of paper, which I have a separate sheet of paper for injuries, literally a separate sheet of paper. So on my two-sided sheet of paper, I have 12 injuries. There were more than that, but these were the ones that are some really big names that I thought we should mention. Um, So... Buckle up, everybody. Number one, we have Nick Bosa, defensive end for the 49ers, tore his ACL. He's done for the season. Next. Oh, my God. This breaks my heart. Saquon Barkley, the running back for the New York Giants, also tore his ACL and is done for the season. (laughs) Oh my god. Okay, yeah. So basically the the silver lining here, I know I'm going to discuss this one a little more than all the others, but that's just because um I'm a Giants fan and I can do whatever I want. It's my podcast. Um <laughs> the Giants are actually working out um Devonta Freeman from the uh 
he's a free agent now, but he played for the Atlanta Falcons. So he looks like he's going to be the one that is going to take Saquon's place for this season. Well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> it breaks my heart. I, I wish all of these people all the luck with their injuries because I can't even imagine. Uh, number three, we have Christian McCaffrey, the running back for Carolina. Um, oops, sorry. I just knocked my microphone. High ankle sprain. Doesn't look like he's out for the season. They're giving him four to six weeks. Number four, Drew Locke, the quarterback for Denver. He has a sprained ankle joint. It looks like he can be out either two weeks or six weeks. We don't really know yet. Um, and we'll get into all these storylines as well once we finish naming off these injuries. Now we have Cortland Sutton, the wide receiver for Denver. He was complaining about cramping, but turns out that he also tore his ACL. He is out for the season. Jimmy Garoppolo, QB for San Francisco, high ankle sprain. Um, he's day-to-day right now. He might end up playing on Sunday versus the Giants. Malik Hooker, the safety for Indianapolis. He has an Achilles tendon injury. He is also out for the season, but he has had multiple injuries, excuse me, in the past. In the past three seasons, he's missed 14 games. He has torn his ACL and his MCL and has also torn his meniscus, so obviously... Malik Hooker may or may not ever play again for the Indianapolis Colts. We will see. Raheem Mostert, the running back for San Francisco, sprained his MCL. He is week to week right now. Tyrod Taylor had chest pains before the game. It turns out that he had um, some painkiller injection into his ribs, which caused him to have trouble breathing. And he was out for the game. Um, Obviously, this is for the Chargers. And there's no timeline for him right now, uh, but we will, we will talk a little bit about Tyrod a little later. Bruce Irvin from Seattle, defensive end, um, this is also his ACL, tore his ACL out for the season. Tevin Coleman, running back for San Francisco, he hurt his week, his week, he hurt his knee. Um, they said that he'll be out for quote unquote several weeks. Solomon Thomas. Defensive lineman for San Francisco also tore his ACL and he is out for the season. Now, you might be saying, Samantha, why is San Francisco falling apart? Now, what <laughs> San Fr- I don't know, but what San Francisco looks like um, they are blaming all of their injuries on is MetLife Stadium. Now, MetLife Stadium is where both the Jets and the Giants play. And San Francisco played the Jets this past Sunday and will be playing the Giants next Sunday. So they will be playing in MetLife two weeks in a row. However, they are saying that the turf at MetLife is the reason why they struggled so much with their injuries. Apparently, the turf has, like, it's complied to all of the protocols that need to be done for the NFL. The Jets and the Giants obviously both don't struggle on the turf when they play at home, but the uh, NFLPA is concerned about this whole turf situation because they're afraid of the well-being of the players, which obviously is, that's totally fine. I, I totally get that, but This one team happened to lose a lot of players, which really sucks. However, uh, like, if the Jets and the Giants haven't struggled, and it's not even just one team, it's two teams, if neither of them have struggled, then I don't think that, um, that there really is anything wrong with the turf. Maybe the San Francisco 49ers just weren't accustomed to it, which also, who knows? Who knows what's going on with that? So, um, (laughs) MetLife turf under observation right now which is crazy to think about so let's move on to week two shall we let's get into the nitty-gritty of it all so nfl week two let's start off with this falcons cowboys game okay so as a person a fan of a team in the nfc east um seeing the cowboys win breaks my heart. I think that people even who aren't in the AFC East struggle to see the Cowboys win, who probably struggles the most, at least this past weekend, 
are Atlanta Falcons fans and the Atlanta Falcons in general. So obviously everybody knows the story of the 28-3 lead that they had in the Super Bowl a few years ago against New England. And the whole joke has always been that they blew a 28-3 lead. Now that hangs over their head for quite some time. And now week two of the NFL, they're playing the Cowboys and they had a 20 to nothing lead. So, obviously, like I said earlier when we were going over the scores, Dallas won 40 to 39. 40 to 39. That's one point. They were 30 it was 39-37. T- uh Dallas gets down the field, scores the field goal, gets them to 40 points. And, oh my god, I just, I don't know if Dan Quinn's, uh, the coach of Atlanta, I don't know if his job is on the line because of this. I remember last year that they were concerned about Dan Quinn, but all of his players stuck up for him and they were like, no, he's our coach, we don't want him to leave. They went on, like, a winning spree and then he didn't lose his job. Will this, um, be brought back to light? Possibly. But um, we'll have to wait and see. But before we move on from this game, we just have to mention the Dallas Cowboys onside kick was one of the most... uh, Okay, words. Basically, this kick was almost so bad that it was good because the Falcons obviously do not know what to do when an onside kick kick happens because when you onside kick, you have to wait for the ball to go at least 10 yards before you, the kicking team, can retrieve it. The ball went 10 yards, and for some reason, the Falcons did not jump on it. That is how Dallas got the ball back. That is how they got back down the field, and that is how Greg Zerline kicked this game-winning field goal that got him to, to 40 points, and I cannot believe... I cannot believe that this happened. It is perplexing. Anyway, let's move on. Um, The Seahawks-Patriots game. Excellent Sunday night game. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I loved it so much. I loved seeing Russell Wilson come out and play like Russell Wilson does. Um, Just incredible. I was really excited to see Cam Newton play. We've been wanting to see him play against like a real team, not the the Miami Dolphins. Although Miami uh, has been putting up a fight lately, but we'll get back to that. Um, the only thing is that New England was running down the field. They were gonna win the game. The score was 35 to 30. It stayed 35 to 30 because I don't know if this was a play that they were going to use because it's Cam Newton and Cam Newton runs the ball or if Belichick called a different play where he was going to throw the ball and Cam's ego just got too big for him and he had to run in the winning touchdown. But they knew, like, Seattle just knew that Cam was going to run the ball. Like, it's just, that's just what Cam Newton does. It was very predictable. They were able to stop him, snuffed him, basically, at the yard, uh, the goal line. And the Patriots lost to Seattle. So, again, I don't know if Bill Belichick called that play. I have a feeling that Belichick would be someone who knew something. Like, he knew that they would know that he would, they would run the ball. So, I'm just... It's very confusing to me, to be honest with you. But, um, yeah. Cam did very well, I must say. Also, I put it on my Instagram story, on my personal Instagram account, but... Greg Olson, who now plays for the Seattle Seahawks, and Cam Newton were reunited, and they ran to each other and, and, like, hugged each other because they played on Carolina together, and it was just such a sweet, sweet moment. Um, It brought a small tear to my eye. All right, moving on. We had... Kirk Cousins not doing too well against Indianapolis. He threw for three interceptions, and... Completed 11 out of 26 passes. Not the best start for Kirk Cousins, but doing real well in Indianapolis, I guess. Shout out Phil Rivers. Good for them. Um, Let's move on to this Chargers game. And like I said, we were talking about this Tyrod injury. 
I'm not entirely sure what the situation was, but basically they were saying that he was getting some sort of painkiller injection into his ribs and he was having trouble breathing after that and therefore that is why Justin Herbert ended up started starting because we didn't hear about Justin Herbert starting all week. So nobody was really expecting this. So what's interesting is that Justin Herbert didn't know he was going to start. He probably found out maybe a an hour or so before he started. And with these unusual circumstances, playing against the reigning Super Bowl champions, I gotta say, Justin Herbert did extremely well. And again, under these weird circumstances where he probably wasn't mentally ready, he did a really good job. Did he make a lot of rookie mistakes? Absolutely. He made so many rookie mistakes. Did he overthrow the ball a ton of times? Yes, but did you see those bullets? They remind me of of Daniel Jones a little bit. Daniel Jones has a really hard time being accurate. Justin Herbert seems to be having a very similar problem. However, they were they were bullets indeed and he got the game into OT. We saw our first OT game of the season. It was so entertaining to watch. It was so good. However, Anthony Lynn's out here saying, oh no, well, if Tyrod is good to play, Tyrod is our starter, which doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know why. However, seems like that is the deal with that. Um, I think that I, do I agree with that? No, I don't. You don't just draft a guy sixth overall to bench him. After you've seen what he can do. Again, yes, he, there's things to work on. There always is. But this was his first start as an NFL quarterback playing against the Super Bowl champions. Got them into overtime. Did they lose? Yeah, they struggled in overtime a little bit. But, the, you know, Kansas City didn't score. They just got a field goal. So... I really think that Justin Herbert is a shining light. I very much like him a lot, and I think that he's going to do some really great things. Maybe Anthony Lynn promised Tyrod that he wouldn't give his job up to a rookie like what happened in Cleveland with Baker Mayfield, but it is what it is. The kid threw for um, 311 yards, one touchdown, 22 of 31 passes. Not too shabby. That's all I got to say about that. Um, with this Titans Jags game, Minshew out here again doing big things. Three hundred and thirty nine yards, three touchdowns. I mean, he's just stunning the world. I gotta say. And um, but the the other person who came out on top on this game, Ryan Tannehill, I have to say, is worth every penny that the Titans are getting that are giving him. The fact that Ryan Tannehill threw for two hundred and thirty nine yards four touchdowns like to have that kind of quarterback on a team where you have an amazing running back like with Derrick Henry where yes he's running a lot we're handing the ball off a lot but also when the defense of the opposing team happens to be just snuffing him constantly and you have to start throwing the ball instead of relying just on Derrick Henry Ryan Tannehill can do those things and the Titans you cannot write them off they are a dangerous team and I can see them getting getting dirty in the playoffs. That's all I'm saying. So that was that game. Uh, the Eagles. The Eagles have been struggling these past two weeks, and they 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 really are. I was expecting a little more out of the Eagles, and again, as a Giants fan, I don't want the Eagles to succeed. However, they um they were. I'd rather have the Eagles in there than the Cowboys. That's all I got to say. Or the football team. So anyway, the Eagles struggling again. Carson Wentz threw for two interceptions and they even filtered in. Okay, listen, they even filtered in fake boos from the fake fans, from the fake crowd noise. Someone from this organization who is in charge of the fan noise filtered in booze after they did something wrong. I was like, oh my god, this is the most savage move I have ever seen in my life. (laughs) It was 
just preposterous but absolutely amazing and to be honest I thought that it was hilarious but the the Eagles lost to the Rams the Rams are out here 2-0 you know doing their thing whatever so that's what's going on with the Eagles the Packers oh my god the Packers Aaron Jones is out here running 236 yards from scrimmage are you kidding me he is outstandingly amazing and Aaron Rodgers still is just like you are not getting this kid to replace me anytime soon that Jordan Love kid mm -mm, you could have drafted him but I'm still here I'm not retired yet I'm gonna put up another 40 points this week I'll put up more 40 points next week just just don't you dare sit me down yet he is so in the zone and I absolutely love it Packers to the Super Bowl this year that's all I'm saying all right um, also, Detroit started out really strong, uh, but they're also still the Detroit Lions, and the Packers were like, um, no, you can't be up by 14 points. No, honey, I'm sorry. That doesn't happen like that, all right? We're gonna win. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, with the Denver Broncos, they lost Drew Locke, like I said earlier. Jeff Driscoll came in for Drew Locke, did a very good job against Pittsburgh, Um, But the Pittsburgh defense is basically the star of the show this week, I think. Um, uh, But Driscoll put up a fight. um, But the Denver Broncos did something very fun just today. Today is Tuesday, by the way, the 22nd of September. Um, So today, Blake Bortles was signed a one-year deal to the Denver Broncos. And uh, Drew Locke, if I were you, I'd be just a tad nervous because of Blake Bortles comes out here being like London games, Blake Bortles, he may or may not take your job. So I would be a little bit nervous. Tom Brady, (laughs) Tom Brady came out with his first win as a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. So that's fun. Yay for Tom Brady. And um, I think that Bruce Arians has been saying some pretty hurtful things to his quarterback I must say he's just like basically not praising him all the time like he's just like yeah he's a really great player but like we need to work on things and we need to do this this and that and Tom Brady again you can't write the bucks off that fast Mm -mm, nope I, I people there's a reason why people are scared of the Buccaneers and I'm just saying, they're they're going to start heating up. Tom Brady is like this. He he starts off at a slow simmer and then builds up to a roaring boil. So I have a feeling that the Buccaneers are just going to get scarier from here. And the Panthers have lost Christian McCaffrey. And they better hope that he gets home. He gets home. <laughs> he gets better sooner than later because um, Panthers are not looking too hot without him. Uh, Let's move on to the Bills. Josh Allen. Oh, my God. This kid's out here just, like, running down the field, throwing people off of him. Oh, that's also another thing with the L.A. Chargers. When Justin Herbert was running down the field and bodied a linebacker, just bodied him, bodied a whole linebacker, like, no problem, and he shot up like nothing had happened and the linebacker was flat on his back on the ground this kid jo- uh, justin herbert is 6'6 236 pounds he is not a small guy so to be able to flat out a linebacker that's a that's a solid boy i got to say it's he's a solid boy um so josh allen back to him he also had a something like he didn't lay out a linebacker but um he did run down the field throwing people off of him pushing through like Really great, and he's a great passer, especially with a target like Stephon Diggs in his corner. Just insane. I really want the Bills to win the AFC East so bad. I don't want the Patriots to win again. I want the Bills to dominate because we know it ain't going to be the Dolphins, and we know it's not going to be the New York Jets. Let's just get those guys out of there. So the Bills, you are our shining hope. Our shining hope. So... I hope that the Bills do well. Also, they're a New York team. I like to root for the Bills just because they are a fantastic New York team as opposed to the other two that we cheer for, despite being fans. Sometimes I would like to feel some joy. That's all. Just want to feel some joy. (laughs) Um, And the Dolphins, though, the Dolphins are putting up a fight. I gotta say, the Dolphins are out here almost winning. It was 31 to 28. It was not a blowout. It was very close. So the Dolphins are out here 
they're doing their thing. So let's move on to the Giants game. The Giants, Bears. The Bears are two and O. Oh, okay. Um, are the Bears good? I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know if the Bears are good or not. But they didn't score at all in the second half of this Giants game. The Giants could have easily made their way down the field and scored and won this game. But for some reason, we cannot do that. We cannot put the ball on the end zone. I don't know why. I'm, I just want them to just get it over that line. That's all you got to do. Just score. That's how you win the games. Uh, but anyway, they were right on the goal line, right at at the end of the game. I was ready to actually put a win in my pocket this week, but somehow it just fell apart. There was a flag on that play. I thought that we were going to get a second chance. Turns out it didn't even matter, and everything sucks. Baltimore! (laughs) Baltimore's doing insanely great things. They are, um, the- the, the defense for Baltimore forced two turnovers, including a 22-yard fumble recovery. So they are just out here doing insanely amazing things. Lamar is out here playing MVP-leveled games, like just doing Lamar things. And Mark Ingram, of course, had a 20, uh, sorry, excuse me, a 30-yard touchdown uh, through a direct snap. So the Ravens are going to Raven. I gotta say, they seem like a... It's unstoppable force right now. I have no doubt that they are going to make it very, very far. Um, Thursday night game, really quick. We saw Joe Burrow do some really great Joe Burrow things again, although the Bengals seem to be failing him yet again. Uh, 316 yards for three touchdowns, but the Bear- the Browns actually came out on top. A very, very entertaining game for a game that we thought was going to be a dumpster fire. So thank you for that, Joe and Baker two of my favorite quarterbacks in the league right now. I love you guys. Yay. <laughs> All right. The um Monday night game. So this was very interesting. Really, I would think a lot of people thought the Saints were going to come out on top. However, the Raiders are out here winning games against Drew Brees. So the, like I said, this the score was 34-24. You know, it was it wasn't close for a while. The Raiders were just getting down the field. Um, but what I wanted to mention well actually let me just say really quick, Josh Jacobs out here just carrying whole defenses, just doing their own thing, like that's insane. Derek Carr for threw for two hundred and eighty two yards, three touchdowns. And a lot of people are asking whether Drew Brees is showing his age or not. I said before the season started that I think they think this is Drew Brees' last year. But don't you dare say that about Drew Brees. Okay? That's my man. Can't say that about Drew. He's not old. Anyway. <laughs> um, also, the Saints were without Michael Thomas. So I think they were struggling a bit without him. But before we move on from NFL Week 2, we just have to talk about really quick the stadium. The new Raiders stadium, Allegiant Stadium, is something incredible. Oh my god. And the thing is that this stadium was only $2 billion. B, with a B. $2 billion. SoFi Stadium, which was just built by the LA teams, the Rams and the Chargers, was $5 billion with a B dollars. Okay, like insane. Just that's a lot of money. But anyway, I think that this this stadium, Allegiant Stadium, is significantly nicer than well, not nicer. I just think it's cooler. SoFi Stadium is is cool, but Allegiant Stadium has this huge torch that's meant to kind of represent Al Davis, who used to own the Raiders, Mike Davis. Mike Davis, who um, obviously owns the Raiders now, um, who whose father was Al Davis, so they're they're doing it in memory of him with this huge torch that looks so cool behind, uh, like up at the top of the stadium towards one of the end zones. It's so cool, but the coolest part of this whole field is that it's a dome, like it's inside, but the grass is real. It's real grass. So, 
in order for it to get sun, they literally pick it up and bring it outside and they bring this real grass outside so it gets sun and they water it and then they bring it back inside. So the whole thing, the whole stadium is really, really cool. Then we had one of our ESPN Monday Night Football Weird Halftime Shows, which I live for. I love them so much. They had the Killers last night because they are Las Vegas natives, apparently. I had no idea that that is what the Killers even looked like. I could have ran into any of them on the street and um, would have had no idea that any of them were in the band The Killers, but they sing Mr. Brightside, and I think that literally boosted 2020 up just a, just like a point, which is worth something. So everybody was very happy to see The Killers sing Mr. Brightside. Okay, and then basically to wrap up NFL Week 2, we have the fact that the NFL told the coaches last week that if they did not wear their masks correctly, that they would find them. So, this week, every week, we will update you on what coaches were fined. To be quite honest with you, I think they did it prematurely because Sean Payton is 100% going to get fined. I did not see that man wearing a mask one time, and he had Rona, so I don't know what he was up to. But Vic Fangio, Kyle Shanahan, and Pete Cow are the three coaches that have been fined $100,000 this week, as well as their organization, I believe, gets fined $250,000. So the team has to pay and the coach has to pay. And to be quite honest, if they keep this up, the NFL is going to be making a lot of money and this is what's going to make up for the fact that the fans are not in the stands. So that is um, the whole situation with the coaches and their not wearing of masks. Hey, wear your mask, people. It's important. Okay, let's get into our segments for today's show because I realize that we are literally going to do our tea time right now, and then after that, we're just going to keep doing segments. So, usually I say, this is our first segment on our show, and my favorite segment on the show, tea time. Tea time is my favorite segment on the show because we delve into the hot steamy gossip of the sports world, and this week, people, we have some people to call out, don't we? Yes, we do. So... This guy named Jason Whitlock decided to send out a tweet and write an article. He writes for this place called Outkick.com, which I have never heard of before, but I've heard of Jason Whitlock before. So basically, he put up this tweet. It says, Beauty has a privilege that trumps over privileges. Beauty transformed Katie Nolan from a bartender to seven-figure personality and the darling of aroused bloggers and TV critics willing to ignore her pedestrian humor and inability to execute live television. Now, we all know last week that we discussed that there was a guy who ended up getting fired from his job because of the comments he made about Maria Taylor's outfit on Monday Night Football last week. So, obviously, there's... Something's going on through some of these people's brains that they are very threatened by women in sports. So as a woman in sports and as a woman who has been discriminated against because she is a woman in sports, I needed to talk about this on our tea time. And the fact that this article basically was about quote unquote beauty privileges and beauty privileges apparently to Mr. Whitlock is the fact that none of these women would be where they are if they weren't pretty and that is just not true at all. A lot of women get hired because of their talent and their knowledge. I'm sure that there are the way that the networks work are that oh that girl is prettier than this girl and they have the same amount of knowledge we're gonna hire the prettier girl to have on television i'm pretty sure that's how networks seem to work it's just the way that some people are but then he starts talking about maria taylor again and all of this stuff and then that there was also a tweet by doug Gottlieb, i think is how you pronounce his last name which to be honest, I'm not entirely sure. He said, why does Maria Taylor have a vote? And the vote that he's talking about is her voting on certain things, um, 
regarding sports. And uh, he said, why does Maria Taylor have a vote? Real question. She is a studio host, sideline reporter in her first year covering the NBA. She works a ton, not just in the league. No reason for her to have a vote. Maria Taylor clapped back and said, because I played basketball, I cover the league and I deserve everything I've worked hard for. Jason Whitlock decided to come out and say that Maria Taylor did not work hard enough to get to where she is and that she got to where she is because she's pretty. So, obviously, also, that is extremely sexist. And then he came forward to say that none of that is sexist because this guy, Doug, would have said that about a man. To be quite honest with you, I highly doubt that. Would he have said it if the guy made, like, a stupid mistake? Maybe. But the reason why he's talking about her just having a say in a vote is because she is a woman. That's just the way that it is. And until people get that through their brains, it's going to continue being that way, unfortunately. He then goes on in this article to talk about how good Maria Taylor is at her job, which is like, I just don't understand how this man's mind is working while he's writing out this whole thing. And going back to the tweet, he's talking about Katie Nolan Katie Nolan is so good. (laughs) I love Katie Nolan and all the content she puts out. They put out this amazing video about a year ago of her, Maria Taylor's in it, Sarah Spain, a bunch of women are in it and basically they're (laughs) pretending to be in this cult of women that their only goal in life is to make, like to basically take sports away from men. And this video if you haven't seen it oh my god it is a stellar skit that they put on i've seen it 1400 times maybe it makes me laugh every single time it has like over a million views on twitter it is so good so anyway this whole tea time is almost like a rant but just the fact that this guy had the audacity to say any of these things just doesn't make any sense to me to be quite honest with you Um, I think Maria Taylor is excellent at her job, and I think she looked fabulous last Monday during Monday Night Football. I absolutely loved that outfit so much. It made me gasp. I talked about it last week during her clapback at that guy. I don't even remember his name, quite honestly. It doesn't matter. He lost his job because he referred to her to a porn star or a porn awards, whatever it was. doesn't matter anymore. But the fact that these people continue to come at these women for their talent and the fact that they are indeed beautiful it just does not mean that that undermines anything that they're doing maria taylor is still at her job katie nolan is still at her job women in sports are very good at their jobs and they have to work twice as hard in order to get where they are as opposed to guys who just get the job because they know their stuff so just wanted to throw that out there for our tea time this week um sorry if it got a little ranty there for a second but nonetheless Let's move on. So we didn't do this last week, but um, last season I did a whole like segment about celebrations in the NFL when they became not legal, when they became allowed, (laughs) like like dancing in Footloose became legal, celebrations in the NFL (laughs) became allowed. So, basically, when that became allowed, I made this segment on my podcast called Respect the Red Zone. Now, in Respect the Red Zone, I would pull out a bunch of different celebrations that would happen that were very good and, like, rank them and everything like that. But we have been lacking sufficiently in the celebrations department. However, yes, last night, like, to remind you guys, it is Tuesday... Um, last night on Monday Night Football, we had a, a contender, I should say, that is worth being put on Respect the Red Zone. So, last night, when the Raiders scored a touchdown by their wide receiver, Zay Jones, they decided to do a hand sanitizer celebration in which they 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 formed a circle and Zay Jones walked over to them and pretended to give everybody a squirt of hand sanitizer to clean their hands and to be honest it was pretty great so I figured that deserved a little bit of recognition during our respect the red zone segment this week if there, are ce- if there are celebrations that are worth mentioning, I will 100% bring this segment back 
However, I will not bring this segment back if there's no celebrations to be ranking to begin with. So I just wanted to throw that out there and um, let's move on. Okie dokie. So let's get to our Let's Talk About It segment. And our Let's Talk About It segment this week is uh, it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be really fun. So this week we are going to talk about the Belichicks. No, no, no. We're not cheering. We're not cheering this week for the Belichicks. We are going to boo. You're going to boo for the Belichicks. So. <laughs> first things first. Bill Belichick's mask on Sunday Night Football. I have discovered some very valid information about why he looked so ridiculous with this thing on. I, the second we saw him, I was like, oh my god, what is he doing? I've never, I've seen a lot of people wear their masks below their nose. It's like what people do, they think that that's how you're supposed to wear a mask and that you can quote unquote breathe better, but just pull your mask over your nose, okay? That's the incorrect way to wear it. Secondly, I've never seen somebody do this, but Bill Belichick had it over his nose, but like only like half of his mouth. So like he could definitely talk from his bottom lip. I don't know. It was very strange. <laughs> the whole thing was so weird. So I was like, that, like, why did no one tell him how to wear a mask correctly? He's got it on because he knows he'll get fined if he doesn't. I found out this interesting tidbit of information is the fact that it was not an adult-sized mask. Bill Belichick was out here wearing a child's mask, which is why it looked so wonky on his face. So I literally was just like, oh my god. First of all, did someone give Bill Belichick a mask that was a child mask to make fun of him? Or did Bill Belichick pick up this mask and say, yes, this works for me. I am comfortable in this to wear for four hours or however long the football game went on for. So, um, <laughs> it will, he looked like, I saw a tweet that said he looked like Mermaid Man <laughs> from Spongebob. <laughs> oh my god, it is so funny and the whole thing was just so weird. But the second part, when I said Belichick's, I meant Belichick's because there's another Belichick on the Patriots sport uh, coaching staff that we have to discuss. And that is Steve Belichick, who is Bill's son. To be honest with you, if I saw Steve Belichick walking down the street, I would walk across the street. Uh, he looks like the most terrifying man I have ever almost seen. I mean, the mullet. People, oh my god, the mullet. It is ridiculous. Why, who let him cut his hair like that? Why would you think that that was a good idea? Why would you think that cutting your hair in that way makes you look uh, decent, good, anything? Why would you do that? I just, I don't, it doesn't make any sense to me. So, <laughs> I I know, like, the thing is that, like, I feel like he does it so that, actually, no, I take that back. I don't think that he does it because he wants attention. I bet you he does it thinking that he's, like, blending in. I don't know, the Belichicks are so strange. They are smart. They are football-oriented. They are on the ball that way. But Bill's out here wearing a child-sized mask. Steve's out here looking like he cut his own hair. Which, to be quite honest with you, I would not be surprised if Steve Belichick cut his own hair. I really wouldn't. Like, literally, if someone came up to me right now and was just like, Hey, you've seen Steve Belichick's mullet? And I'd be like, yeah. And he goes, yeah, he does that himself. I'd be like, literally, doesn't surprise me. Doesn't, I just, I don't, it doesn't make, it, it, I, I can't formulate words. Big serial killer psychopath energy coming from that. If he didn't have it, I bet he'd look a little less sinister. But with it, I really, and I've seen tweets on Twitter on Sunday night that fully agreed with me that the whole mullet thing is just very strange. Very weird. Anyway, that's it. We talked about it. We talked about the Belichicks. Let's move on 
to our tweet of the week. Tweet of the week this week. So this week, our tweet goes out. We're, we're tying in Barstool again. However, this girl, she's not a part of Barstool anymore, but um, I respect her nonetheless because she used to put out some really great content. She still does. That's why she's our tweet of the week this week. Our tweet of the week goes to Ellie Schnitt, who was the host of Schnitt Talk on Barstool Podcasts. She recently just said that she no longer works there. Um, I don't think anything bad happened. I think she just decided to stop doing it. So this is our tweet of the week this week. She said, I don't like football games where one team is winning by a huge amount and won't let the other team score. It's mean. If you're already going to win, you should at least let, you should just let them score so they don't feel sad. (laughs) I saw that and I was like, you know what, Ellie, you are 100% correct. That is hilarious. And uh, 100% our tweet of the week this week for Ellie. Thanks for making me laugh, Ellie. I, I appreciate you. Finally, our feel-good story of the week this week, um, I guess is a bittersweet story, but basically Saquon, um, put up this post that said, quote, going to be a hell of a story. And just, you know, despite his injury, it seems like he's really keeping his head up and he wants this to be the best thing that he could possibly make out of it. Like, like not having a season this season, this year sucks. However, he seems like he's got his head up high, he's going to make the best of it, and he's going to make sure that when he's able to come back, that he's going to come back stronger and better and ready to go. And that made me really happy. Also, the fact that um, there are still zero COVID cases in the NFL. I think that that's really fantastic. They are doing a great job keeping everything under wraps there. Um, I just saw a thing earlier about college football and how... Um, they've had to go some teams are gonna have to quarantine because they've been exposed some players have COVID Um, obviously that's harder because they are in college but um, our feel-good stories no COVID in the NFL so we get another week and Saquon's got his head up he's doing good things he's ready to go he's ready to make sure he gets better and hopefully everything is going to be a-okay So thank you guys all for listening this week. That's going to do it for our show. Um, If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Press that little bell to turn on notifications so you don't miss a video like the one I put out yesterday about um, obviously my new background that I put up. I'll find some more fun things to put on the YouTube that's very exclusive to YouTube and won't be on the podcast Also, um, don't forget to follow and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, wherever it is that you get your podcasts from. Um, Please don't forget to do that as well as leave reviews on any of those, especially Apple Podcasts. It's very helpful to the podcast if you send a review over. It's us higher up on the search bar and all that good stuff. So I appreciate you all for already doing that and um, for doing it in the future. Also, I don't think I mentioned it in the beginning of the podcast, but don't forget to follow on Twitter, TGWTS Podcast. That is where I put all my updates and everything for the podcast and fun tweets, memes, all that good stuff. Um, So don't forget to follow the Twitter, the podcast, the YouTube. Am I missing anything? I I think that's it. And guys, don't forget to stay safe, wear a mask. Use hand sanitizer, all that good stuff. We want everybody to stay safe, especially now that it is officially fall. We don't want to get sick and, um, you know, it's going to start getting cold. So please make sure that everybody stays safe. And um, I hope you all have a fun, fantastic sports-filled day. And I will see you guys all next week. Bye!